Deadly Premonition 2 is one of those games that I have a love-hate relationship with. I love how boldly original Deadly Premonition 2 is compared to a lot of games out there. It's not afraid to be weird or different, but I felt its charm only carried the game so far. It seemed rushed and unfinished, and it introduces a lot of gameplay mechanic experiments that are ultimately never capitalized on, at least in the main game. In my review of the game, I shared shared all my gripes about the broken launch state of Deadly Premonition 2, but I feel I could have done a better job of pointing out what had improved with the later patches the game received. Well, the game has not been updated since September of 2020 with version 1.04. Right off the bat, the first thing I noticed is the improvement of loading times whenever you're entering the overworld. Usually, it would take upwards of three minutes to load the overworld world. But here, they've chipped it down to one. That's a big improvement. Another thing many people have noted is the improved frame rate. Instead of being around 15 to 20, it is now an uncapped frame rate, and it varies wildly depending on the area. For example, in the overworld of Lucare, it hovers around 30 frames per second, but will often drop when there's too much action going on, or when you're going really fast on your skateboard. I still can't pan the camera around York without the frames dropping all over the place. However, when York enters the other world, the frame rate jumps up to 60 frames per second in the repetitive shooting gallery segments that no one cares about. Well, if anything, I can say Toybox is consistent in their inconsistencies. Despite addressing these two concerns, not much else has been addressed. The game still occasionally softlocks when talking with certain NPCs, so just make sure you're saving often. Speaking of NPCs, if you happen to follow any of the town folks' routines, you might notice some erratic patterns of behavior. Take for instance, Emma here floating and clipping through town. And Danny's ghost car, which I'm still not sure if it's a glitch or a sweary doing another coy nod to Stephen King novels like Christine. Either way, this still doesn't look right. In terms of story, the game is still playable from beginning to end, but to this date, it is still impossible to reach 100% completion in the stamp book. In my review, I feel I may have understated how insane the requirements of the stamp book are in order to earn all 400 stamps. I'm not exaggerating when I say the stamp book puts you through the paces of every single mechanic that Deadly Premonition 2 has has to offer. You have to hunt thousands of animals, pick up thousands of rare materials to craft every voodoo charm in the game. You have to become a master of bowling, a master of river target practicing, stone skipping, a Tony Hawk grade skateboarder, stock every NPC in town throughout the week to unlock very specific quest lines that take an entire other week to complete, smoke hundreds of cigarettes, get super stinky and dirty, and pay thousands upon thousands of dollars in fines for being stinky, for harming civilians, for shooting Patricia in the face, for destroying property. Oh, and you also have to play the game for over 365 days within the game world, all while hotel fees are stacking up. You're trapped in a perpetual cycle of feeding York, letting him get sunburnt and dirty and grow a beard and paying attention to when you trim the beard and clean his clothes and taking on hundreds of free quests that you can find in the police station, but you can only access them on certain episodes after certain very specific requirements have been met. Now, why would anyone in their right mind go out of their way to fulfill all the requirements of the 400 stamps within the stamp book. It's all in pursuit of the game's white whale, the elusive purple suit. 
After every 40 stamps you earn within the stamp book, you unlock a snazzy new suit for York to wear. These suits are primarily just a cosmetic change and do not carry with it character attributes like the ones found within the first Deadly Premonition. In layman's terms, they're just for bragging rights. Now since the game's launch, there's been a small community diligently grinding their way throughout all 400 stamps in a fruitless pursuit of unlocking the purple suit. You have to really love Deadly Premonition 2 in spite of all of its flaws to acquire this members only jacket. Fulfilling the stamp book requires over an additional 80 to 100 hours of gameplay, which can be a shorter or longer effect depending on your skill level when it comes to stuff like the bowling or if RN Jesus is smiling upon you when it comes to the rare drops. However, to this very date, no one has been able to get the purple suit by legitimate means. And that's because there's a major glitch within the quest giving system, which will never allow you to unlock the three quests you need in order to meet the requirements of stamp number 380. These are known as the Wolf House Brothers free quests. These quests are centered around York going to the Owl's Nest and drinking all the alcoholic beverages on the menu. There are five total quests issued by the Wolf House Brothers. However, in its current state, you can only complete two of them and the other three still remain locked. Do I need to point out the irony that the only thing keeping Deadly Premonition 2 from being a complete game is a drinking related mission? Sweary and his goddamn meta commentary. The Deadly Premonition community is still eagerly awaiting Toy Box to release one final patch so the most diehard of players can finally acquire their rightfully earned purple suit. Even still, there's a lot I can appreciate about the absurdity surrounding the purple suit. It's a tedious, frustrating waste of time designed by devilish developers with a disdain for their players that I've only seen once before before in Takeshi's challenge. But if that sounds like a good time to you, then I have some good news. My friend and co-writer on Sweary Files 2, Mirk, has put out one of the most detailed and hilarious guides regarding the stamp book. And even if you're not gonna go for it yourself, it's still worth a read for the sheer absurdity factor. This is one of the most simple yet monotonous and grindy stamps in the game. Since you'll need to spend at least 300 and 60 days in Lucare committed to just growing out 30 full beards. The requirements found within the guide are a hilarious insight into either the mind of Sweary or maybe an example of how hands-off he was during the development process by letting Toybox have re-reign to implement these thousands upon thousands of tedious tasks in order to get one of the most insignificant rewards of all time. If you want to wait at the 390 stamp gate with us then please check out his guide and maybe one day our prayers for a new patch will be heard and we can all wear purple suits together that's all i have for today's sweary files mini if you liked what you just watched then please leave a thumb subscribe support the channel on patreon if you wish and check out my playlist of my feature length videos on deadly premonition and the games of sweary 65 i'm hakiko and i'll see you all next time